Okay, if you're a little squeamish, you might want to cover your ears. <laughs> this is about sex and sales. I'm going to talk about something that your parents and your clergymen told you never to discuss in polite company. And that's just the sales part. <laughs> if you don't think you're in sales, I want you to think back to the last time you wanted sex. If you can entice that special person in your life to be intimate with you, or even someone who's not so special, I don't judge, <laughs> then you can sell. Sales skills are some of the best skills you can have in life. But the word sales has a negative connotation, doesn't it? We, th we think about the con man in the polyester suit, and whatever he's saying, we know he's lying because he wants to sell us something. There are salespeople who will lie to make a sale. There are also people who lie about sex, like most people, <laughs> including some of you. I used to, but I don't anymore. Now I tell the truth. When someone asks me, for example, are you good in bed? I say, no. <laughs> but I'm fun. <laughs> The truth is, every one of you here is a salesperson. You all have sales ability within you. It's just a matter of motivation. We know that when it comes to sex and romance, that things are better if we slow it down, right? Salespeople knew, need to do the same thing. They need to slow it down. But unfortunately, a lot of salespeople suffer from a condition. It's kind of embarrassing. It's called P. P D. Premature presentation disorder. <laughs> you won't laugh if it happens to you. <laughs> what happens is they skip the foreplay. They don't turn the customer on to buy. They just jump to the main act, which is trying to close the sale. What happens is the salesperson is done before the customer's even warmed up. Sound familiar? <laughs> Salespeople remind me of poodles. Yeah, when I was in college, a friend of mine had a little white poodle named Pepe. And every time I would walk into her house, before the door was even closed, Pepe would grab my leg and go to town. You know what I'm talking about. Pepe would be romancing my leg, get off of me. No licks on the face, no puppy breath in the ear. Pepe just went for what he wanted. I see salespeople do this all the time. They just go for what they want. In other words, the sale without generating any customer interest. But what's pretty cool is these same people, when they're trying to seduce someone, they slow down and become very focused. They don't mount the customer's leg. <laughs> it's like the sales gene gets activated. Let me give you an example. I consult with corporate sales teams, mainly in the medical device industry, and I was asked to spend a day riding along with a sales rep named Brad. Brad wasn't doing too well. In fact, he was at risk of losing his job. So we made uh, 11 attempts to call on doctors. He only got in to see four of them. And each call sounded the same. He said, hi, uh, doctor, I want to show you my stuff. Mine's the best. Mine lasts the longest. Buy mine. And every doctor said the same thing. They said, Brad, thanks for coming by. I'm not interested. And he didn't handle that objection very well either. He'd say, you're not interested, but, but mine lasts longer. And then he would just toss him a brochure and say, well, give me a call if you change your mind. So after a day of bad sales calls like that, there was only one course of action. We went to a bar. <laughs> That's what you would do, right? So we're sitting at the bar, it's happy hour, we're debriefing the day's sales calls, and all of a sudden, Brad is distracted by this very attractive woman who's walking towards the empty bar stool next to him. And he says, uh, Mace, excuse me a minute. And he rotates his bar stool around to talk to her. I go, Brad, what are you doing, man? We're trying to save your job. And he looks at the woman and he says, hi, I'm wondering if you'd like to meet a nice guy who happens to be relationship material, who doesn't lie, steal, or cheat. And she says, I would, but he doesn't exist. 
Besides, I have a boyfriend. And I expected Brad just to do what he did before, you know, just toss her a brochure and say, well, <laughs> call me if you change your mind. Or, mine lasts longer. <laughs> but he didn't. Instead, he said, thank you for being honest. I respect committed relationships. My name's Brad, what's yours? She says, my name's Kelly. He says, Kelly, you mentioned that you have a boyfriend. What's his name? My, my boyfriend, um, Stephen. Well, let me ask you, Kelly, when you and Stephen first met, what was it about the two of you that clicked? And she said, you know, I, I, I'm just here to have a drink with a friend. I don't really know you. That's kind of a personal question. Brad says, well, you know, Kelly, you're right. I shouldn't have asked you that, but you see, I'd really like to meet a woman of your caliber. And I'm just wondering, you know, what, you know, what attracts you in a man? You know, what do you look for? And she says, well, I tend to like men that I think I can change. <laughs> You'll notice none of the men are laughing. <laughs> she said, Brad, I'm only kidding. I like nice guys. You seem like a nice guy. So, well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Let's talk about you. Um, you know, where are you from? What do you do? And he spent the next 20 minutes just completely focused on her, finding out where she went to school, you know, what she likes to do for exercise. And then he said to her, he said, you know, Kelly, you are an amazing woman, and Stephen is a very lucky man. Your relationship is pretty perfect, isn't it? She says, well, you know, thanks for the compliment, Brad, but you know, no relationship is perfect. I mean, uh, we have our moments. Stephen has his moments. He says, really? Kelly, if there was anything you could change about Stephen, anything, what would it be? Now, I'm watching this from the side. I'm thinking, this guy an hour ago couldn't sell water in the desert. And now this, this woman has inspired this salesmanship within him that he doesn't even know he has. So Kelly answers the question. She says, okay, what would I change about Stephen? I wish Stephen would take an interest in me. He just talks about himself. Brad, how long have I known you? I've known you for 20 minutes. You've asked more about me in 20 minutes than Stephen has in the last year. Brad says, wow, that's amazing. And then he stares right into Kelly's eyes and he says, Kelly... Do you ever wonder if there's someone out there in the world <laughs> who's, who's just for you? I mean, someone that's, that's just, I, I know Stephen's a great guy and everything, but do you ever wonder if your, your perfect match is out there? And she just says, well, I, I guess, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I, 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 we, we, should, we shouldn't talk about that. He changes the subject, he says, Kelly, I'll tell you what, why don't we get together with coffee? And she says, oh, Brad, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I'm, you know, I'm in a relationship. And he says, Kelly, it's just coffee. Just two friends having coffee. That's all I'm interested in. <laughs> really? Salespeople do lie. <laughs> Why don't you meet me at Starbucks tomorrow morning at 7.30? I'll buy. She says, okay, I'll see you there. And she goes off to meet her friend. So Brad turns around and I said, well, nice going, Hotshot. What are you going to do now? He says, what do you mean? I said, she's in a relationship. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have coffee with her. And I'm going to find out all that I can about her, specifically whether or not Stephen is the right guy for her. Because if he is, I'll respect it and leave it alone. But if he's not, I'm going to win her over one cup of coffee at a time. <laughs> you see, when it, when it came to Kelly, when it came to sex, he was very strategic. I said, Brad, your last sales call was close to perfect. He says, you mean the one with Dr. Adams? I said, no, that one sucked. <laughs> so I'm talking about the one with Kelly just now. If you can do with your customers what you just did with her, you're not only going to hit quota, you're going to blow it out of the water. He says, so let me get this right. So what you're telling me is that I should sell to my customers the same way I try to meet a woman in a bar. And I said, well, no, yeah, yeah, because that's, that's, yeah. it works. You see, again, he, he didn't try to hump Kelly's leg. <laughs> he, instead, he became very strategic. He focused on her, and he asked questions to uncover information that he could use to position himself as an alternative, a better alternative, to what she currently has. What would have happened if if he would have approached her like a typical salesperson? In other words, you know, hi, want to see what I got? <laughs> Buy one, get one. <laughs> she would have reacted like a typical buyer. She would have said, no thanks, I'm just looking. 
I already have one at home. That won't look good on me. You won't look good on me. I'm sorry, I have no place to put it. And no, you're not putting it there. <laughs> you see, if you want to be a great salesperson, then think like a great lover, or at least one who's fun. <laughs> be passionate. Inspire desire. And then amplify those feelings you create in your customers by teasing them into moments of anticipation where they can almost taste the pleasure that awaits them. Show them how to get what they want, because when you do, they'll be almost begging for it. And watch for the buying signals, because when you see those buying signals, the rest is easy. All that's left to do is to close the deal, satisfy the customer, and then <sighs> catch your breath. You both got what you wanted. That, my friends, is a good sales call. Every one of you is a salesperson. You all have sales ability within you. It's just a matter of motivation. <laughs>